This is quite astonishing. And the Germans just kept coming and made it look so easy. After 29 minutes, it was 5-0. Brazil's dream of winning at home wasn't just dashed, it was crushed. Fans were stunned. Some were weeping, all having trouble believing what they were seeing and leaving before the first half was even over. This was the most embarrassing thing ever in the World Cup. I could understand without Neymar we might lose 1-0 or 2-1, but like this? This is just embarrassing. Maybe you can force one in. Oscar is... In the dying moments of the game, Brazil finally got one, but it was far too late. This is not a game. This is a shame. Rafael Morales got here three hours before game time. She says this will again ignite all of the questions and perhaps protests about why Brazil spent so much on the tournament and if it was worth it. It would be a war. I'm afraid of this. A lot of money. There, a lot of money. Police were ready for trouble after the match, but perhaps echoing the feelings of millions of Brazilians, the skies opened up and cleared the streets. The 7-1 defeat was Brazil's worst ever World Cup loss and first loss of a competitive match at home in 29 years, and one that Brazilians will never forget. Susana da Silva, CBC News, Rio de Janeiro. That was a real shame. In 1986, Argentina came out on top, beating West Germany. Three years later, those teams met again. West Germany prevailed then 1-0. Argentina and the Netherlands right here on CBC. But tomorrow's semifinal matchup does have a Canadian connection. The CBC's Ron Charles has that story for us tonight. Dubai, it's in! With no Canadian team in the World Cup. And the touch laid by three goals! Jonathan de Guzman may be the next best thing. He was born in Toronto, but went to the Netherlands at age 12 to develop and eventually play professionally. Now he's on the Dutch national team. No Canadian has come this far since 1986, the last year Canada qualified, the year before de Guzman was born. De Guzman's older brother Julian also went to Europe to develop and play pro. It's great to see him do well, you know, on the biggest stage in the world. And, I mean, I know he's playing for Holland, but deep down inside, the guy's Canadian. That's it, boys. Andrew Ornek has known Jonathan De Guzman for years. He also played professionally in the Netherlands. Now he runs a soccer training camp based on Dutch training methods. He'll be okay, watching tomorrow. We're all very proud of him. You know, he's accomplished a lot and he's living the dream. So we're all uh, supporting him very much. He says it's unfortunate talented Canadians like him and the de Guzmans once had to move to Europe to develop. We grew up back then with, with no professional football club in the city, in the province, or not even in the, in the country. Yes. Now that Canada has three major league soccer teams, Ornak hopes any little Jonathan de Guzmans on this field won't have to go to Europe to develop and might one day play in the World Cup on Canada's own team. Ron Charles, CBC News, Toronto. But what does that mean for Hockey Nation? Is Canada's love of ice starting to melt? Coming up, our special sports panel will look for shifting loyalties among Canadian sports fans. And... Well, we're gonna take it home. Probably twist up a little joint. Call the cops. These pot deals are legal in 